In this video, we'll be talking about different kinds of numbers. In other words, various different number sets, from natural numbers all the way up to complex numbers. Are you ready? Let's discover the maths. We'll start with the natural numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. Historically, these were the first to be used, and they're also the first that we learn about uh, as children, because they enable us to count. Eventually, zero was also recognized as a valid number. Today, we consider the natural numbers to form a set, and denote it by the letter n. Some mathematicians include zero as a natural number, and others don't. In fact, there's still disagreement over this issue. Now in maths, how can we indicate the difference between having three things, say, and owing three things? The magnitude or size is the same in each case, three. But they're obviously different situations. The solution is to include a sign, positive or negative, so that having three things is shown by plus three and owing by minus three. In this way, we've created a new number set, the integers, which we denote by the letter Z. It consists of the positive integers, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc., to the right of 0 on the number line, and the negative integers, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, and so on, to the left. The positive integers are denoted by Z+, plus, and the negative integers by Z-. minus. The set of integers, of course, includes the natural numbers. When negative numbers were first introduced, they were very controversial. In fact, the German mathematician Leopold Kronecker said this, God created natural numbers, the rest are the work of man. Now, ever since ancient times, people have realized that you sometimes need to talk about parts of a unit. Think of it this way you don't always feel like eating a whole pizza. So we have to deal with fractions, both positive and negative. Over time, mathematicians agreed not to allow fractions to have a denominator of zero, because it turns out that leads to all kinds of problems. There's also the issue of different looking fractions that amount to the same thing. For example, a half, two quarters, and three sixths these are said to be equivalent because they can all be cancelled down to the same fraction. Equivalent fractions, both positive and negative, are irreducible and together with the whole numbers form the set of rational numbers denoted by Q. The rational numbers include any number that can be expressed as one whole number divided by another. Notice that any integer, A, can be expressed as that integer divided by 1. In other words, the fraction a over 1. Even in ancient times, though, it was known that not all fractions are rational. Take, for example, the diagonal of a square of side 1, which is the square root of 2, and the length of a semicircle of radius 1, which is pi. Neither root 2 nor pi can be written as one whole number over another. They belong to a different set of numbers, said to be irrational. Together, the rational and irrational numbers form the set known as real numbers. One way to think of real numbers is as points on the number line. In between the points that represent rational numbers are gaps, which correspond to irrational numbers. When real numbers are put in the form of decimals, rational numbers have a finite number of decimal digits or a periodically recurring pattern of decimal digits. The rest are irrational numbers. If we denote the set of real numbers by R, then R contains both the rational numbers Q and the irrationals, which we can denote by I. We've said that both root 2 and pi are irrational. A bit later, though, we'll see that they have different properties, which means they're not the same kind of irrational number. We should mention that when it comes to the decimal expression of real numbers, 
0.999 recurring is exactly equivalent to 1, and in general every non-zero terminating decimal has two equivalent representations. For example, 7.5 and 7.4999 recurring. Now, there are equations with integer coefficients that don't have real number solutions. For instance, when trying to solve a quadratic equation, the discriminant may be negative. This happens, for example, with the equations x squared plus x plus 1 equals 0 and x squared plus 1 equals 0. Equations like these do have solutions, but they involve the imaginary unit denoted by i, which is the square root of minus 1. Complex numbers are defined as those of the form a plus bi, where a and b are real, and a is said to be the real part, and b the imaginary part. Real numbers are contained within the set of complex numbers, since they're complex numbers whose imaginary part is zero. You may ask, what are complex numbers good for? When they were first introduced, they were considered to be scandalous, much more so even than uh, negative numbers. Over time, though, they were accepted because of their utility, not only in solving equations in pure maths, but in physics. For instance, they used in the theory of circuits that involve alternating currents. They're another example of a pure mathematical concept that later found an important use in the real world. We've seen how the different sets of numbers are related. The natural numbers are contained within the set of integers, which in turn is contained within the set of rational numbers. The rational numbers together with the irrational numbers is contained within the set of real numbers, which is contained within the set of complex numbers. Finally, we need to mention that numbers can be either algebraic or transcendental. Algebraic numbers are those that are solutions of equations with integer coefficients. So any rational number is algebraic. Also, numbers such as the square root of 2 which is the solution of the equation x squared minus 2 equals 0, and the imaginary unit i, which is the solution of the equation x squared plus 1 equals 0, are algebraic. Transcendental numbers are those that aren't algebraic. In other words, they aren't solutions to any equation with integer coefficients. It can be proved with a bit of effort that both pi and e are transcendental. I hope you found this useful. Thanks again for watching. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you again very soon to discover more maths.